Oh, hello guys out there. Uh, welcome to my first ever video I made on this channel where I showcase my redstone creations. And this particular one I'm going to send for the RDF server application form. And yeah, this is uh, my redstone CPU, an experimental CPU actually we could say, because it's not that fancy. Um, I'm going to go over every each component very briefly and show you a little demo program. Um, yeah, now this is the teleporter with a command block which teleports me to the control room and to the control, uh, I mean, to the program memory. And this is where I control everything after I write my program on the program memory. And here is my, oh my god, this bat is annoying. So, we could, I guess, do this. Okay. This is my info panel here. Where I can um, write 4-bit um, inputs to the A, uh, to my input registers. And I have written now 5 to A. And written 2 to B. And what I can do is that I can invert uh, all of this with a single click. And if I want to, I, will, I can clear A and B with this button. And it's a pretty loud because it's used some fence gates and stuff. Which are unfortunately going to be f patched at 1.5, but whatever. And this is my um, clock. Let me, oh, actually, what I can do Oops. is that I can remove all these torches right now. Um, to show you how my clock runs. This is how you program um, the CPU, by the way. Oh, some black there. And we shouldn't have any left here. And if you do, it's not a problem. No worries. Oh, where am I going? I love using this button. Okay. Now, uh, when I turn the computer on, let me do it like this. The program is right, right now running. Here. And when it gets to the 15, which is all 4 bits um, lit up, the program stops. And this is a little prog This is a little problem where I face. Um, I need a device that can detect mm, program lines that doesn't involve anything so that it will shut down. Right now, even if I wrote uh, three lines of program, it will still go through all 15 lines of code and look for some um, card written. So I need an empty code line detector, which is the probably the name of it, I don't know. And let me show you how everything goes through. So this is my um, control room. This is my input selection device that I just came up with, which is pretty slow, but whatever. It's not that important. And these um, values go through this um, RAM, 8-bit input RAM. And this is A and this is B. And these values after go to my to another RAM. <laughs> this is where I screwed up. Now I totally forgot that I made a separate RAM for my input registers and I made 
another RAM for another uh, input register value. Um, so my programs became long. Um, so let's say I could make a subtraction program with three lines of code. Now I can do it with now I have to write eight lines of code. And this is pretty um, bad. Um, I really s I really screw it up here. And these values go to their an another RAM and saved or written and or read written by the program memory commands and then they go through the ALU if the program memory um, says it to do so and these are my program uh, ALU function program memory selections and this is the actually um, ALU here which used uh, Benny's cube um, ALU design which he has on RDF server and I tried to come up with my own which was um, like three times bigger than this and three times slower as well and then uh, I thought I have watched the Benny's cube ALU design and why not like that and I tried to copy I not I tried not to copy all of it but I screwed up pretty bad there as well and yeah <laughs> and then these uh, the output of the ALU go to this green part the register which also Benius could inspired me to do so these are block update detector RAM uh, memory cells here and then these values go down with the spirals um, staircase because I actually uh, couldn't find any better design to make it go you know, nine blocks or something and then this is my indicators here which show me the output so yeah I showed you the path and this is my program canter here which is the hooked up four hooked up t flip flops as a binary canter and then go to a decimal a binary to decimal uh, decoder. Now I could have used shift registers, but you know uh, it would be pretty um, com complicated. Now, it has some cool functions. I know so you can you know, stop the program. You, yeah, you can still stop the program using these default flop counters, but whatever. <laughs> the advantage of using shift registers is that you can have so many functions like looping or you can use bit bidirectional shift registers to go back through your code. I don't know what's going to do, but you know, some cool features. And this is my program memory setup here. Um, and these are the machine. Uh, this here up here is the binary uh, to machine code um, decoder I just made. It's just a binary to decimal uh, decoder. And these are my mesh uh, codes here, which I have. And I don't have a sales segment display or a random number generator right now. But in my second CPU, I will do these. And this design is going to be much smaller and faster and better because I learned so much stuff doing this. And here's my uh, ALU functions like my control line, convert an application. Fault carry, cut carry, invert B, invert A, increment by 1, and set least significant bit to 0, which I need to do in order to read the indicators. Let me just get some torches and start uh, making a subtractive program. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to take these inputs uh, I wrote to A and B and load them to my RAM. And so let's do that. Read from user input A, write to RAM A, read from user input B, write to RAM B, and these are 1 and 2 in binary. So I'm just going to write these like so. And then I'm just, oops, I need to load them um, to bus, buses A and B from my ALU uh, to read them, actually. Um, so I need 3 and 4. Four, yep. 
derp to that for a second. Um, three, four, and then I need to uh, read from my bus A. Actually, load my values from A. It's it's not wrong here, and then my do the same thing for my B inputs. So these are six and seven. So we go six, seven, and then I need to put, get the output and put them to my indicator. So write output of LU to RAM C, which has the code five. Okay, so we are done with the memory stuff. Now we should go to the line where our LU receives the uh, inputs, which are um, lines fifth, five, and six. I guess two, three. Yes, five and six. Now I should go there. Let me just place a block like this. And now to make uh, an other subtract, you need to. Actually, first of all, I need to open my control lines to the data to go and sync. Now, I don't need conversion on application or something. I just need to enter A, increment by 1, so give 1 to carry, and set my list significant bit to 0. And let's do this real quick. Oops. And yeah, this should be all of it. So now, if we didn't did anything wrong, we should have our. I'm just going to enter here. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so let's let's write our values. So now, please note, subtraction is in the form of b minus a. So that's something. No. Let's write five. B and what can we write? Three. Okay, and run the program. Right now it's doing all of this stuff. And when we are at the seventh line, we should have our value here. I hope it works. And we have two. Which is the correct answer because five minus three is two. Right now the program is going through all the lines and shuts down the CPU. And now I can clear that register and we're done. We run a complete subtractor program perfectly in my CPU. Just cool. <laughs> now I'll be showcasing some more my some of my more redstone creations in this channel, so stay tuned. See you guys, bye.